Hi everyone, I'm Tom Denford, co-founder and CEO of IDcoms. Welcome to another Media Snack Meets, where we get to meet the individuals and organizations doing great work to inspire success and drive change in the global media and marketing industry. Because the best are short on time, I ask just six questions in 15 minutes or less, and we get to learn what's behind that success, what it takes to make change in the industry, and maybe what the rest of us can learn from those experiences. My guest for this week is Marla Kaplowitz, who's the CEO of the Four A's. Oh, hey guys. Hello, Hello gentlemen. gentlemen. Where are you? There you are. Yes. Hey, Marla. Hello, Tom. Great to see you. And to you. Thank you so much for coming on the show. So I'd said you're the CEO of the four A's, which I'm, I'm going to test now. The American <laughs> Association of Advertising Agencies, if I got that around the right you way. You did get that correct. Which is this awesome trade body that looks after the interests of agencies all across the U.S. And you have, I don't know how many members you have now, but it's over 600 members. Hundreds and hundreds of agencies. Yes. And I love, I say to the people all the time, I love now being based in the U.S. for the last few years and really getting to know what a rich, like independent agency culture there is in the US, which was yeah. kind of news to me, having worked here for years and years. We just uncover these amazing agencies every day. So, um, and they're all members of your amazing- No, agency. they're incredible. Uh, half our members are holding company agencies and the other half are independents. And it goes to show that there's an agency out there for everyone. There's so many different types and it really depends on what your needs are. Good. Okay, so you know you've seen the show, you know the format, you you know lots of the yeah. previous guests. I'm sure you recognise many friends and colleagues in mm -hmm. that uh, in that little intro. Um, so just by way of introduction, so just explain to those that don't know Four A's like what it is, what do you do, and something that you're most proud of that the Four A's has has done, or something maybe else in your career that you're most proud of. Sure. So the four A's really is very focused on, as you said, representing agencies. So supporting them, advocating for them, helping them with talent, making sure that the industry is working together and collaborating to demonstrate the value of agencies. But I tell our team every day, how do we add value to our members and help their business thrive? And how do we move the industry forward? So everything we do is either strictly on behalf of the agencies or mm -hmm more broadly on the industry. And since this is a media snack, I'm gonna tell you the, the proudest thing that I think the Forays has done in the past few years is really bringing together all the leading media agencies to focus in on brand safety and suitability and the creation of the Advertiser Protection Bureau, Lewis Jones, when he was at the Forays, really bringing people together to launch the brand safety floor, the brand suitability framework that has now been embraced and adopted by the GARM globally and refined. And that work continues. And that APB team meets every single week. They are so committed, now very much focused on misinformation and disinformation and what's going on in this country. Well, that's really good. And, and you know, as we've spoken a lot on Media Snack, I know you're aware, we really appreciate any type of collaboration. You know, we're really strong advocates for collaboration. And when advertisers and publishers, vendors, other trade associations want to want to collaborate with agencies, they know that they can do that with you know, via the four A's mm -hmm. because you can bring your members together. And that, that's been really powerful, I think, as we yeah. needed to really cross those aisles, I think you say in America, you know, cross the aisles yes. and, and collaborate across different parties. Um, really good. So let's, um, like you and I, we've known each other for a long time because we used to work in an agency together many, many That's years right. ago. That's you, right. You've seen from different sides of the industry but and experienced a lot. So what, what's been or remains the best thing for you about media? I know you're not exclusively media these days. I'm not, but I, I spent 30 years of my career in the agency side focused on media. And I just have always believed that it's just an exciting area. It's incredibly dynamic. There's always something new to learn, whether it's exploring opportunities, creating new ways of working, solving business problems, but it's also filled with some amazing entrepreneurial people. And you just look at the proliferation and change that has happened. I think back to when I started in advertising and we used to solve for cable with you know 5% of our budget. Obviously the world has changed significantly since then. And I think that's what motivates and excites people to be part of it. 
Good. I like that. Well, that's, you know, what we're equally passionate about that. Yeah. It brings its challenges, though, So, so of which there are many. And I think yeah. the, the four A's has been, you know, at the forefront of many of those, you know, been involved in many of those challenges and big, as I said, deep discussions mm-hmm. that require these collaborations. So from your perspective, what, what are the things that really lingering for your members and, and do you think is a big challenge? So every single CEO that I speak to recently, when I talk to them about what their biggest challenge is, it's one thing, talent. And that's not just this industry. It's the biggest challenge for every industry right now. We are in an era of talent empowerment. They want flexibility. They want benefits. uh, And therefore, companies have to think really differently about how do you motivate people? How do you engage them? How do you ensure that you're investing in them and training in them? They want to understand what their career pathing opportunities are because they have other options out there. And we need to take the last year and a half and we need to really think differently about what the future of work means. Uh, So that's a lot of the work that we're doing now at the forays with our members. We just hired a new director of talent relations to work more closely with our agencies. And we will continue to develop new programs within our professional and organizational development team. Uh, We're just about to launch something called Campaign Enlightenment focused on how to help agencies understand DE&I better when it comes to all aspects of campaign development. But it's back to talent. How do you train them? How do you retain them? And again, how do you ensure that you are bringing together an equitable group of people and delivering against that? Yeah, good. Now, you mentioned before, and I hugely agree with it, that, that agencies because I think historically a lot of agencies have, are, have been owner founded, even if they're now part of public companies, mm-hmm. they stay, they retain that culture of entrepreneurialism. And, yeah. and you know, we comment a lot. We've always been impressed at agencies ability to, you know, to just be agile and reinvent themselves mm-hmm. Sometimes too much. You might say like to, sometimes agencies are constantly trying to reinvent themselves. Um, and because of that, they've always been relatively progressive places to work, you know, so I, I mean, it's yeah. good to hear that leadership in agencies is really listening to, uh, you know, the, kind of the people that they want to attract. But also in the last two years, we, what we do know is that agencies, agencies agility also means that they do let people go pretty quickly and pretty easily. And agencies have lost a lot of people mm-hmm. by, by choice, right, in, in the last year or so. How do those things kind of balance out? Because that's, we hear the same thing, agencies yeah. desperate talent um you know how do they navigate that between having to be so responsive to the kind of financial pressures at one minute but then having to reinvent the business to attract new talent the, the next minute i think you've just raised the probably one of the biggest challenges for leaders right now especially as the business starts to shift from retainer to project based how you need to flex but how do you motivate and engage talent uh, this business has always been volatile And there are people that don't want to be part of that. Um, It's a dynamic business and things are always changing. And that's both the exciting part of it, but also uh, an aspect that probably is raising concern for some people. And while the agency world contracted last year, like a lot of businesses, it's now back to expanding as businesses back to a growth mode. And getting that talent is proving challenging. And I think that everyone is recognizing they need to be thinking differently in order to retain that talent more long-term, as well as looking in different places to find the talent. You know, yeah. It doesn't help to keep going to another agency to find talent. You're just hurting the industry overall. How do we expand that and go to other creative fields and bring new people in? Okay, so good, just while we're on that as well, and before we move yeah. to the next question, just. You know, if anyone's watching that that is that is interested in getting into agencies, what what from your perspective could you see across the more? What's the best routes in? Is, is there a really good initiative? Is the four A's involved in in oh yeah? Recruitment? What what what's oh, so- in? The best initiative that we have is our MAPE program, the Multicultural Advertising Intern Program that's been around for 48 years where we're bringing diverse students to agencies. This year we have over 400 fellows. Uh, This week we have the career fair going on. They're amazing. We train them, they get the experience, the internship. That's great for entry level. Uh, but there's obviously very different places to be looking for people at the mid to senior level and the agency business continues to expand and now you need people in data analytics that is a hot area Mm -hmm. people with e-com shopping experience 
it continues to grow. So uh, the forays is helping agencies as much as possible. Another initiative that we have is we are actually getting ready to launch a freelancer job portal because we know it's been really challenging to find talent. And so we want to be able to bring talent together that's vetted, that's been used by members that can actually collaborate with one another to talk about that and yeah. then have access. Yeah, great. Okay, so anyone job hunting right now in agencies, um, look up those things. Maybe we can put some Absolutely. Um, so our next question is about leadership advice, which is kind of interesting because you, you've, you've been leader of a number of organizations and or taken leadership positions, but you now also you, you have hundreds of agency CEOs sometimes looking to you for, for leadership advice. So you're really the kind of go-to person from the agency side. So if you boil that down, what's, what's a good piece of leadership advice that either you give to others frequently that you think hopefully is valuable or something that you've received from somebody else that you use a lot that you could share with us? Yeah, I'm going to share a quote with you that a client gave to me. So my former client at P&G, Cindy Tripp, uh, when she was moving on to her next role, she found different quotes that represented people. But I, I thought this was uh, a really interesting quote. And it's the surest way not to fail is to determine to succeed by Richard Brinsley Sheridan. And I know people love to embrace failure, but I think there's something about this that talks about tenacity and resilience and also being prepared. Um, being prepared, there's curveballs that are always coming at you. But I think the exciting thing about this business is people always know how to figure it out. This is an industry of problem solvers. Yeah. And that's exciting. But always be thinking ahead. Uh, that's another, it's like always be thinking. I had one person always say to me, do it in the shower, do it wherever you do it best. But don't turn that brain off. And I think that's what's exciting is to always consider what are the possibilities and what are the options. And that's what motivates me. Good advice like that. Um, right. So outside of, I mean, you, your very long days coaching agencies to success and dealing with all these kind of industry industry challenges, where would we where would we find you to, to escape mm -hmm. the pressures of, of the advertising business? Uh, if the w weather is good, you'll find me outside biking. Love to get on my bike and go different places. Uh, if the weather is not good or I have limited time, you'll find mm -hmm. me on my Peloton doing a spin class. But I also love to get out and listen to podcasts. So it's my motivation to go walking and kind of feed my curious brain at the same time. Good. Right. Love that. I hope this will be somebody's podcast, walking podcast. I'm sure, at some <laughs> yeah, point. So exactly. If you're listening to this on a podcast. Um, leave a comment down below. Let us know. And um, <laughs> so finally, um, just looking for the year ahead. So we always ask guests just to give us again an idea. You, you, you have a really good view across the industry in the, in, within the four A's um, and you contact so much of the industry. You're in contact with so much of the industry. Where would you like us to be a year from now, you know, to, yeah. if we're delivering the 4As agenda or just generally for the industry? Uh, so this is both for the 4As and the industry. I really, truly hope that a year from now we have taken the time to really address, at least begin to address the systemic issues in our industry related to equity and inclusion with BIPOC owned and targeted media. There's a lot of work that's been happening in this area. We're working across all the large media agencies right now with our five point media commitment. And I think what's special right now is that everyone is supportive and not being precious about their own work. They're collaborating, they're sharing because they recognize this is an industry problem and we all need to work together to solve it. So we're also working with the IAB and the ANA to say, we need a collective list. We need to understand the size of this market so that we can actually tap into it. Uh, this has been a long time issue and it's gonna take time to make progress, but we're slowly getting there. And so if we could show significant impact in the next year, I think that's, fantastic for the next five to 10 years and the future of this business. Really good. More collaboration. I love that. Yes. And Marla Kaplowitz, president and CEO of the 4As. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tom. Great to be here. Who would you like to meet on future episodes? Please let us know in the comments below. Subscribe to our channel where you will also find previous guests, including leading media executives from companies like P&G, L'Oreal, Mars, MasterCard, and many more plus some of the industry's most provocative thought leaders, such as Belinda Smith, Jerry Dakin, Professor Mark Ritson, Nadine Cart-McHugh, and Gary Vaynerchuk. 
You can also subscribe to get new episodes each week. And if you like this episode and think someone else would, then please do share it. Thanks so much for watching. 